Uh, let's take a look at this album. So I've got the preview up on my screen. Um, so this is a 20 page template album and it's really based off the album that I have been creating for Ella that we've been kind of looking at if you've made any of the sessions. Uh, we'll take a look at some of these pages, but I essentially created these pages using um, some other templates that were in the store and added in some extras. And I, I did make some modifications to some of the masks and added in some extra stains. And so I've adjusted them um, a fair amount for me to feel like it's a good idea to create a new template album. And the amount of time it took for me to do that, it's certainly worth your while to um, probably buy the template album than it is to try and recreate it yourself. But if you have the time, then go for it. I did include the previews in the store if you want to have a go at doing that. Um, but the idea really behind this was that I personally like to use a lot more photos um, in my designs. And so I thought it would be a good idea to modify a template album and put it together in, in that way. So you, we basically have uh, six different folders. So I divide the templates up into folders just to make it easier for you guys to download so that if you have a, um, a, a slower internet connection, then it doesn't take hours and hours um, for you to download these templates. So I try to keep the file sizes under, under 100 megabytes um, is always my goal. So in this is template, this is the first template. There is going to be a multi-photo template album number um, two coming uh, probably next month. And that's going to be the other part. My album is probably going to end up being about 40 pages. Um, I eventually kind of just asked Ella. It occurred to me as I was coming to the end of the album that uh, we still have her graduation celebration. We still have her graduation coming up and potentially she would want to have those events included in this project. And I would hate to print the project, present it to her and then her say, well, it doesn't have my graduation in it. So um, I suspect, suspected right and she does actually want that in there. So I, so I think that I'm gonna have um, a double pay, uh, I'm going to have extra pages in there. I've also thought about having kind of a guest book. And so when people come and they wish her well and they offer her advice for her future, I might try to include that into a double page spread too. So I expect that there are going to be two, uh, there are going to be two of these multi photo template albums in succession over the next two months. So this is the first 20 pages. And so in this first folder, we have pages one two and three. And so page one is a standalone page. If I go ahead and pull this into my workspace, you can see that we have our layers panel with all of the different layers. They've all been labeled for you. Um, and I try to put the product name in there if you like to keep track of the products that you're using. And so the idea of this page is to introduce your project. Now, these Templates also work independently in that you can just use them for single layouts. So I have included the line guides. You can see the line guides here. So if you were doing a photo book project, you would want to keep the area around the edge of these line guides free of any important details because those are the parts of the page that are going to be cut off if you take this to print. Um, if you want to go ahead and remove those, you can go to view and then you can just click on your rulers tab and that's going to get rid of the um, of the rulers. And I didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to do was um, go back here and clear guides. So if you want to clear those guides, you can click like that and they disappear. I'm gonna go back and reinstate those rulers just because I like to have a reference of where those are on my page design. So a number of different ways you can manipulate this template. You can play around with turning off the different layers. So for example, if you want to have fewer photo frames, you can turn off those layers. Might be a good idea to maybe turn this one off. And then when you turn off frames, what this does is it provides you with the option of being able to extend your text boxes. So with the text box tool selected, you can click in one of those text boxes and kind of drag it up. You can also drag it outwards. So you can change the size 
and the shape of your text box. And then you can also duplicate that text. And so if I wanted to add more text, I could forego one of the photo, um, one of the templates, also one of, one of the photo frames and make room for more text. And it might be that you want to maybe nudge some of these frames across a little bit. Um, you'll also notice that now we have this displaced urban threads file. So typically I will include the urban threads all in a single layer unless there is overlap, overlapping areas. So you can see that these two overlap. I like you to be able to have the flexibility to be able to extract those pieces of stitching and move them around individually. So as much flexibility as I can provide you, the better. And so in order to separate these pieces of stitching from one another, you go ahead and you select the layer and then you use one of the selection tools. In this case, I'm using the rectangular marquee tool. You might use the elliptical marquee tool. You could also even use, I'm gonna switch over from my mouse to my pen just cause it's a little bit more um, intuitive for me, but I can also make a manual selection if I want to using one of the lasso tools. So, and then I'm gonna to go to edit cut and then you can go to edit paste or you can control V, use those shortcut keyboard, uh, keyboard shortcuts. I, I tend to use those control V, control C um, quite frequently. And then with that move tool selected and the auto select option checked, I'm going to click on that element on my layout design and that's going to automatically select that layer in the layers panel and then by holding the control or the command key on my keyboard i can toggle that auto select option this appears at the top of your screen if you're working in photoshop if you're working in photoshop elements it will appear in your options um, lower down in your screen so if i press that control or command key down, you can see that toggles off. And this gives me the freedom then to move this element around my layout design without the concern that I'm going to shift perhaps one of these photo masks from its frame and its shadow. And then this allows me uh, to then, and notice I've released that control command key and then that auto select option has been rechecked. So this allows me then to access, if I'm super careful, this small piece of stitching here. It's actually picking up the text. So I'm gonna turn off the visibility of the text and now I'm gonna go back and you can see now it allows me to pick up that urban threads. And so I have a choice here to turn off the visibility if I decide I don't want that on there. So I can turn it off or I can go ahead and I can reposition that stitching into a different place. So you have this ability to be able to change the number of the photos. So if it's if this template has too many photo spots for your needs, then you can remove some of those and replace those frames with either elements or with more text. Uh, the other thing too, some people don't like this um, overlapping frame look. They don't really know what to do with that. So there's a couple of different options here. I'm going to just go ahead and show you what I've got going on with my page one. Um, so my intro page is sort of a work in progress uh, for Ella's at the moment. So I'm probably gonna add that frame in here I've just sort of added some of the, the photos, but, and, and you can see I don't actually have the double frame here, and I might go ahead and add that double frame in, but I have a couple of options for using this double frame. I'm going to make sure I have that auto select option checked, and then, so that's gonna allow me to click directly onto that layer uh, in the layers panel and then that's going to automatically select that mask layer so super easy for me to identify all of the different layers and we've got a um, couple of new people uh, Diane uh, Laurie sorry not Diane Laurie has arrived so she's excited um, and then um, Kathy says that she's um, really excited about this album too um, we have our friend uh, Femke, I think it is, from France, and then Diane is also here. So welcome for the new people who have just arrived. So I am going to select this photo of Ella, 
and I'm just going to drag it over. And because I pre-selected the mask layer of my frame, then this is going to allow my photo to be deposited directly above that mask layer. And what I'm actually gonna do is just kind of increase the size of this photo so that the edges of the photo fully extend both the edges of this frame layer here. So if I were to, let me just go back, you can see the way it is right now. If I want to go ahead and create clipping mask and clip that photo to the frame and then duplicate that layer and then drag it down to the mask layer beneath and go to layer create clipping mask, you can see if I just uh, uncheck that show transform controls, we'll just turn that off. You can see that the photo doesn't actually fully extend the mask. Now, lucky for us, we can actually fix that by clicking on both the photo layers so that you select those. Make sure you hold down that control or command key. This is going to allow you to uh, really be specific about which layers in your layers panel you select. And then with that move tool selected and the show transform controls checked, um, I, and for some reason it's not, oh, there it is. Then I can now, and see what happened there because I have that auto select option checked. So I want to hold down, click on that photo again, hold down that control or command click key to access both of those images. I have turned off that auto select option. So now when I click, in theory, it's not letting me do it. There we go. Yeah, I kind of have to grab them both like that. And unfortunately this time I managed to select all of them. So I'm failing epically right now. So let's try this one more time. Okay, now it's working. So you have to kind of be just be careful about who, how you click on that corner. So now you can see I'm rotating it. You get that arced double ended arrow in order to be able to rotate both of those pictures at the same time. And I can also resize them so that they cover the back of that or the double frame. Now, obviously it's much easier if you just begin as I had done where we grab that photo, we drag it across and we resize it and we make sure that it actually extends over the edges of both the frames. Maybe rotate it and then we can go to layer, create clipping mask. Let's move it down so that we can actually see Ella's face and then we can duplicate that layer and then just drag it down and go layer, create clipping mask. So that's one of the ways that you can deal with those frames. You can, of course, also just turn off one of the frame layers if you want to. That's another option, um, very valid option if you don't want to deal with the double frames. I personally like them. I feel like they add a bit of depth and a little bit of interest into the mix. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on because my preference is to keep those and I will likely add these frames here to my design so that we add in a bit more um, girth around the edge and just, just more dimension and, and interest to the overall page. The other way we can handle uh, these double frames is to use an artsy paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this. And I did bring up the latest collection, Jubilate, and I'm going to just look at some of the artsy papers. This is the easiest way to do this. Um, so I'm looking at the colors. The first thing I like to do is look at the colors of my photo. And I think in this case, we've got um, fairly neutral colors, which is great because that means I can pretty much go with whatever color I have available. If I was looking at my actual page here, we've got pinks and we've got greens and we've got blues. So as I'm looking for an artsy paper and looking for those sorts of colors, uh, we've got pinks and blues with a little bit of green. Uh, we've got um, some greens and some blues here, so that might work. Um, because it's such a small area, it's not terribly important that you need to find a paper that completely works. So I think I'm gonna go with this one um, and pull it into my workspace. 
And then because I actually have the mask in the layers panel already pre-selected, I can actually drop that photo directly onto my canvas or that paper directly onto my canvas and it's going to be deposited directly above that mask. You also have the option, of course, to uh, drag that paper into your workspace and then you can manually drag that onto your canvas. A couple of more steps. Your other option, of course, as well, is to go to File Open, navigate to the uh, location where you have your digital art supplies saved, and then you can import your paper that way too. So a couple of different ways to handle this. And then you go to Layer Create Clipping Mask. So I like to add the clipping mask in. Hang on a minute, we've got too many layers here. So I'm just gonna delete one of those go to layer create clipping mask and then once I have the paper actually attached to the mask then with the move tool selected and the auto select option unchecked so I'm holding down that control of that command key again this is going to allow me to move this around and then I can basically just move this around till, I'm, till my heart's content to find what I like best, basically the best fit. And it's really going to be in relation to my other photos. I don't have any other photos in here right now, but it's going to, I'm gonna leave it where it's most interesting right now, which is like that. The other option is to use an artsy card. So if I wanted to go ahead and access the artsy cards, if you have those, this is another easy way um, to work with those. And I've actually just deposited all of these artsy cards outside the folders just to make it easy for me to access them. But I could drag this one in. This is one of the six by six artsy cards. And I can drag that directly onto my canvas and go to layer, create clipping mask. And I like it when the paper textures sort of come in these areas. I think that that adds a really fun dimension to um, to the artistry. So that's kind of fun too, where we have this artistry here aligning with the edge. So I'm using that principle of alignment. And then you can also create your own too. So that means you can select one of the solid papers and go ahead and grab one of these solid papers. Maybe we'll go with the purple one just because we've got some pinks going on. And we can go to layer, create clipping mask. And notice I have all of these different layers stacked on top of one another in the clipping set. And this gives me flexibility to be able to toggle between all of them to see which one I like best. And then once you have your foundational layer, then you can go to either the, and I keep clicking the wrong, we can go to the transfers and overlays. So if I wanted to, bring in one of these paper textures, for example, I can create my own design in these squares and I can resize it. This gives me a bit more flexibility to be able to resize the different elements so I can have it like that if I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and go layer, create clipping mask and I can change the blending mode of the layer. So that's kind of fun, the color burn, I could duplicate it to make it much stronger and then if I wanted to, let's go back, I can bring in some of this paintwork. So I'm gonna bring this in, maybe go ahead and rotate it. Now, because I didn't have my cursor at the top of the layers stack, it means that this transfer here sort of kind of didn't attach properly to the clipping set. Well, it, it sort of knocked this one out. So I'm gonna select those two layers and go to layer, create clipping mask so that they all clip to the same mask. And I can duplicate that silver paint um, if I want to. So you can see now how I'm able to create my own custom design. I could also, this time I'm gonna select that top layer so I can demonstrate what happens if you do this properly. If I go ahead and bring, let's do this pink one here, and I'm gonna bring this transfer in, drag it directly into my layout design, and then go to layer, create clipping mask. You can see that it didn't kind of knock out any of those layers in my layers panel. So I was just able to clip it and I didn't have any of the other ones displaced. And so now I can resize it, I can move this around, uh, whatever is most interesting 
Um, so a lot more flexibility. So that's another way that you can use those um, kind of double framed uh, elements. So this is kind of a single page. Um, one of the other things you can play around with too is turning off all of the, the different frame layers. So say for example, you wanted to use this as sort of a, um, a starting point to one of your um, layouts, then you could use the photo blends here independently. So maybe we will, I, I don't know. I mean, personally, I kind of like to have some frames in there, but maybe if you don't want to have a frame, um, you could also remove, rotate the frame so you can change the orientation of a frame from a rectangle or a, a portrait to sort of a landscape sort of situation. And let's go ahead and just trying to grab this. Probably some of these, um, oh, it's letting me move it now. For some reason, it's not showing the bounding box. So um, it seems to come back periodically. I had this issue when I was um, over at Design Cuts the other day. So if I wanted to do something like this, um, or potentially if I wanted to go to image adjustment rotate 90 then this gives me the opportunity to um, to maybe create a different style layout so I can go ahead and maybe remove this stain here I don't know if I love that frame the where it where it is right now so maybe we'll change that and we'll bring this down here And so you can move all of these different elements around to create a different look. So I think I want to rotate this urban threads. Let's rotate that counterclockwise. Add this here. Bring this one down. Maybe rotate it. Maybe rotate using the bounding box or the trans transform controls. And have that here. Maybe rotate this around here. So you have quite a bit of flexibility to be able to change these multi photo um, templates or book templates into a starting point where you can start, to, when you, where you can be perhaps begin creating a standalone page. And you know, maybe we don't want this down here. You could also move these stains around, you can rotate them like this. I think this one's going to come out. So this one can come out a bit like this. You can even um, increase the size of them a little bit. I wouldn't increase them too much because you're going to lose the resolution. Um, I'm trying to grab this stain layer. For some reason, my transform control keeps disappearing out. So you'll just have to be, I don't know why that's happening. I don't know if it's an update, but you can see how I'm able to just make that a little larger. There's a fun little stain here, so maybe we bring this over on this side. And then we can start bringing in our digital art supplies to be able to and start layering them around the frame and maybe around the back of our design. So, you know, you could bring in, let's just play around. I haven't planned any of this, so I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. Let's bring in this blue background design so I might decide, decide to add that in as our layout foundation and then maybe go, we haven't taken a look at the Artsy Transfers yet. So let's go and take a look and see what we have there. Here's the Artsy Transfers. I haven't quite moved those out. Let's see what we have available. I just used that one. So maybe this, let's bring this in and see what we can do. Um, maybe the wrong color, but I'm going to bring these layers in, but we can place those sort of behind like that. And of course that background doesn't work now. So I'm going to go to image adjustment, hue and saturation, and maybe change that into more of a, I don't know, kind of a creamy white color. I'm always uh, more interested in that. And then you have the option with these artsy transfers to be able to turn off layers. You can pull them out. It looks like there's two of the same here. So maybe bring this down like that. Maybe bring this paper down. So you can move these around 
I always, um, I say this so many times, but um, I'm sure you're tired of me saying it, but I always feel like it's a bit like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, you know, where you can kind of move things around and um, change change them to suit suit your preference or just to get them to fit with the particular composition that you're working on. And then maybe you could add something on the side here. So I'm thinking maybe I'll bring this one in and add this in over here like this. And this is gonna add some visual interest to this side. And I kind of like how this paper actually connects with the bottom here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to select these transfers. I've managed to kind of pull them in and separate them. So it's always a good idea to group your transfers. So this is number four. And then this one I'm gonna to group together as number three. And then that way you have better control over the different layers. So now you can see those are the four and that's the three. And then maybe you wanna play around with the different colors. So you can also turn off the visibility of some of those layers. So you can play around with the different colors, hue and saturation, you can play with all of the different colors. You can also, if I go that back to zero, close enough, and then you can pick, like say this yellow, then this is just gonna change the yellow colors and you can change the saturation. So you can start building out with the artistry and then you can go ahead and you can add in the different layers. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer and I think this layer was darkened. So maybe we add dark and blending mode to that. And then the last one I think was color burns. You can also add different blending modes to these layers to sort of get a different fit. And then once you've sort of built out your kind of artistry, then you can maybe go back to, I wonder if I still, I think I still have that intro page open. So I can now bring in this photo of Ella and it's a smaller photo obviously because I've resized it but I've introduced that directly above the mask. You don't want it you don't want ever to increase a photo this size typically, but just because it's easy for me to access, you go to layer, create clipping mask, and now I can add that there. And then maybe I want to add a photo here. Use this one of Ella here. This one would have been probably a much better one to add into the bigger area but I'm gonna go ahead and go layer, create clipping mask. And then because it doesn't really fit my colors, I'm gonna desaturate that. And um, I can now sort of revisit these stains if I wanna keep that stain, probably not that one. This one is, let me grab this one, I probably do want to keep. Might play around with making that lighter and I might, um, I don't know, maybe keep part of this here. Drag it up to the top maybe, so you can change the order of these bits and pieces. So bring it up like that and maybe add a linear burn blending mode. So I quite like that now, I've changed the order of it. And then I kind of want this um, a little bit brighter. So let's go to image adjustment, hue and saturation increase the saturation of that and maybe make it just a little bit more red. And then yeah, I can start bringing in some of my um, digital art supplies. So just because I want this to be super quick because I want to get on and look at the double page options for you guys, I want to see if I can remember, this one might be a decent one. So I'll drag this one in. I'm looking for an element that is um, fairly elongated. So this one looks like a good option. So I'm gonna select all of those layers and then drag this directly onto the top here, drag it up. So like that, so that's kind of perfect. I like how it sort of swings down. It's got the right sort of colors in it 
And then this at the top here, this gray, I kind of desaturated it, but I think I want to maybe look for a color. So let's try purple up here. So yeah, much better. I think that, so that's kind of fast and dirty, but you can see how I have created a fairly um, simple, and we probably need to just remove this paper. So with the eraser tool selected and the Anna Blends Artsy Brush, I'm just going to remove some of that paper texture so that my text will fit nicely into that space. I could even bring the text down here. I could bring the text to the side, and then this would allow me to bring in a title. So let's go ahead and bring this down like this, like that. And then um, you don't want it too close, remember, because we're going to be, if, it depends if it's a photo book and depends how you're printing. Um, if I were to print this with persnickety prints, I would be perfectly fine because they hand trim all of their pages. If I was going to do this as a photo book, I would maybe want to rethink the placement of that text. Or I could just make it sort of longer and skinnier, um, kind of bring it down a bit further like that. Um, or move the whole composition to the left to give me a bit more space. But I want to be mindful of that bleed area on the side here. So that seems to work pretty well. And then um, if I've moved the text from over there, we've got this fun uh, tape, which I kind of want to see a bit more of. So I'm going to drag that up to the top and bring this, maybe I can bring it down to the bottom here, but we can't really see it there. I've managed to grab the, um, so that's the best place for it. Maybe I want to rotate it. There we go. It's really bothering me that, um, I don't know. Has anyone else had that issue where you are um, having a, uh, having a hard time seeing your bounding box? But I can resize this. I'm going to place this here because I like the texture over her backpack. Um, and then this, and I thought I'd turned off the volume of my, my phone. And I had not because I was too busy doing something else. So once I have uh, the tape removed and I have this space at the top here, I could even select these layers and I can use... I'm a big fan of the eraser tool, as you guys will know if you've been in this space. You could also, if you're less confident of your use of the eraser tool, you can always use a paintbrush tool and a mask. But I'm just sort of clearing out this area here. Uh, we've got this stain area, so maybe I'm going to delete this here. And this creates a nice little space so that if I go back to my digital art supplies. I'm looking for my word art. Let's go with celebrate. Um, I'm going to do gift of life um, at the moment and then just add this in like that. And then if I want to add a bit of visual interest in the back, I can maybe go back there and pull in radiant. That seems to work. She looks pretty radiant to me and add this in here like that change the reorder of it. Um, and so that kind of gives you an idea of, of how you can kind of build a freeform page from using any of the, um, from using the, the templates as a sort of starting point for an artsy page. So um, I'm gonna just go ahead and minimize that just in case we need to come back to it. Close these down. And then, of course, as well as using the pages independently or using them uh, as a sort of a starting point for one of your artsy pages, you can also create a double page spread. These are designed to work in double page format. So that means that if we go back to our template album, which is here, then you can see that one is an independent page and so these next two pages here are designed to go together and then from there you've got two double pages in each um in each in each folder now i'm not saying you can't mix and match these but they have been designed to uh they have been designed to work together so i've already pre-designed them to work that way so if you can use them but if you feel like you have uh, the ability and you have the desire to sort of mix and match them then go ahead and do that i'm going to go ahead and just drag these two into the space that i have available so i'm opening these two templates 
and I am uh, not quite ready to do that. So I need to create, first of all, a foundation. Um, now, I like to work at 12 by 12 format, which means that I'm going to double the width and have the same height for my page. So I'm going to be using a 24 by 12 inch canvas. If you are working in 8x8 format, you're going to want to have 16 inches wide and 8 inches tall. If you're working in 10x10 format, it's going to be 20 by 10 So I have a preset here. I'm going to create that and then I want to create a guide because I like to be able to know where my center point is. And so I click in my rulers and I drag and that's going to allow me to create that guide. Now I can go back and grab those two templates that I wanted to bring in earlier. I want to make sure I drag them into my background here. And then uh, I want to use the, the first one here. I'm going to select the background layer at the very bottom, hold down that shift key on my keyboard and select the text layer. Drag this across. I just want to view, zoom out just so that I can see where these go and then just nudge these across using those arrow keys on my keyboard. Make sure that they sit as flush as possible. And then I'm going to put my cursor at the top of the layer stack, close out that template, and then do the same thing. This time I'm gonna start from the top and then go all the way down to the bottom and then drag those layers into position. So I have these two templates side by side. And so you can see how the, uh, the, the splatter sort of progresses from one page to the net next. And then we've got the stain is continuous as well. So if you are printing in um, double page format, then you should be good to go. Okay, so um, let's continue on. So this is our double page spread. And so pretty much you're gonna have the same options available to you working in double page format as you are in working in single page format in that you can adjust the number of um, frames that you have available to you. So if I go ahead and turn off this frame and maybe I wanna turn off this frame too, and then I, this means that I can then duplicate that text box and add more text in if I want to. And then of course modify that text box by extending it out. So that's, that's a, a, a way that you can kind of modify it too. When you're working in double page format, you have an option whether you want to, let's go back to our art play palette you can use the same color background if you want to. So this is a nice way of providing continuity is to have a, the same background running directly across. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these background layers. I typically move the background layers over with the template so that it allows me to place the templates flush against the edges. Uh, once you have those in position, you can remove them because they kind of get in the way when you start adding the digital art supplies. So it's nice to have a background like this if you want to. Um, and then you've got that cohesion, but you can also, if you want to mix and max match. And so if you have taken any of my project classes, you'll have seen how I pull an album together using mismatched backgrounds. Um, so that's an option too. Um, nine times out of 10 though, I'm going to use probably the same background, maybe not nine times out of 10, maybe six times out of 10. Um, more likely to use the same background than not, just because I think it's easier to, um, to create that cohesion. And then you're simply going to just add your photos to, um, the different masks. And I've showed you how to do that. You'll notice that in my particular album here that I didn't even bother adding a background. Quite often I like to have um, just the plain white and then I just, you can see how I've recolored the stains. And so you can recolor any of the elements by going to edit fill. And then if you click on the contents box, if you're in Photoshop elements, this is the use box and you want to click on the downward facing arrow to activate the menu and choose color. And then this is going to activate your color picker. So you can manually select a color like this, 
or if you have photos available to you like we have here then you can go ahead and you can sample any of the colors from your layout design to recolor that stain so let's click OK just minimize this oh, it's, it wants me to the, the important thing about recoloring is to make sure you have that preserved transparency box checked so it's not going to let me minimize this So now you can see that that's being recolored so now I can click on the other one and notice I have that auto select option checked so anytime I click on an element on my layout then it's going to automatically select that layer in the layers panel and then go to edit fill and because we already pre uh, selected that color it's going to add the same color again and then maybe I want to start adding colors down here grab this there we go edit fill like that so yeah for some reason my bounding box is being a bit uh, icky somebody had said to go back to the last update because they kept crashing I think it was Nancy said that I haven't updated that I know of but <laughs> I don't know do these auto install like the Windows updates I'm wondering if they do um, but anyway so you can recolor then you can add you'll notice that this particular template album has these fun little labeled uh, these book plates now I have actually included a number of different book, book plates you can see I've got the black one here um, on this layout and then I've got a pink one and then a yellow one and I think I had blue and red in here so all you have to do is find a book plate in, and there's a bunch of them in the art play palettes in the Anna Aspinus design store and um, you can just go ahead and recolor them so I've actually caught up with these and um, I just haven't resaved them but there's another yellow one I think I have a blue one somewhere too so I just tend to kind of rotate the same colors and recolor them. I decided for you guys that I would just include the black uh, label just because I didn't want you guys to get put off by the different colors that I was using. So we have just the black here, but you can switch these out with any of the book plates that you have in your digital art supplies. I'm gonna go into this, not this folder. I think I must have remo removed it. Here we go. So I'm going to go into the detailed images that you can see the continuity. So here's our first page and then this is our second page spread. And then again, we've got the repeat. So I've included this book plate on, on every spread. I've also included a lot of the urban threads to keep things interesting. We've also got paint splatters and we've got the different, um, taped textures and so the tape textures work in very much the same way as well as these paper textures so this one has a paper texture uh, which the original templates didn't have so I've included those in there and again you can recolor those by going to edit fill and I recommend you go with either a gray or sort of an offset color of the um, an offset color of the palette that you're working with. So for example, let me bring up our example that we were working on earlier. So this one, for example, here we've got in gray, um, but we've got kind of a lot of purples and maybe these blues kind of going on. I also see browns. Browns is all, always a really good option here. So you can go to edit fill and then you can go ahead and you can click on sample a color. This is sometimes brown, sometimes green. I'm kind of going with a brown here. And then once you have the color you want, click OK, ensure that preserved transparency box is checked. It's not super important that you get the color absolutely right immediately um, because you can always go to image adjustment levels and then you can make that bright lighter. So notice how I'm making that lighter or I can move this black lever here and it's going to make it darker. So it gives you the option to sort of change the contrast of that paper texture. You can also go to image adjustment hue and saturation and you can change the hue so you can see it's got more of a blue component now. You can increase the saturation to really make it pop. Uh, you, there's pink here, we've got red coming in, we've got more of a yellow. So it, 
you have a lot of options here for being able to manipulate that once you've applied it but it's always nice to go in with an idea of, of how you want to recolor it and i usually do recolor these these uh paper and tape textures the reason being is is that i feel like black is very um you can see here this is a black one it's very stark it stands out a lot and if you go to edit fill and I'm going to recolor it with brown. You can see just how that softens it a little bit. Um, and it still has great impact. At the moment, the blending mode here is on normal. But if I change it to linear burn, which is my favorite, um, it's not a huge difference. But I think that it does add um, just a little bit more finesse to the layout design. I could even move it over here into this white space so we could see it better. Um, so there's no rules of how you want to do this. Um, I kind of like it over here, so I'm going to leave it there like that. I'm going to minimize that. So any questions about using the templates? I think I've pretty much showed you um, everything to do with that. Let's, instead of uh, closing it, I'm going to minimize it. The other things that I can show you is that we have an end page. So the end pages are always my favorite. I typically use these for random photos that I wasn't able to fit within the album. So as you go through and you add in your photos and you might have some leftover that you thought, man, I wish I could have included those, but the page is going to look really crowded if I try and do that, then you can um, add those in at the end here. So I actually have that happening with Ella's photos. So you can see uh, in my photos folder, I've sort of dropped all of these photos that I sort of wish I could have included, but just didn't have space for into, into the design. And so these are the pictures that I'm going to bring. So I've used this one, for example. I love this one of her and her grandma who is no longer with us. Um, just some really fun captures of her being Ella throughout the years. Um, her one of her uh, not prom dresses but what is it called the homecoming dress so yeah so um just kind of if i wanted to bring one of those in like a i don't know which one do i really want now i'm looking at them all together i'm like well they're all good <laughs> but and i could but i can also move them out so she's a bit like me she likes her camera um this one's kind of fun her doing laundry she's always been the one to do laundry around here and her little fashion design sort of edit um fashion design projects so let's bring this one in with her coffee. Um, but this, see, this allows me then to maybe, I'm gonna start here with the camera in the center because it's kind of ironic and see if I can get that one to fit in there. But I can just start adding those photos in the end here and this creates a really nice sort of um, end to my project by adding in all of these snapshots from all of the different eras because my particular project goes from her being in preschool all the way to her being in 12th grade. Um, so I think I, this is the current layout that I've worked on. So obviously we've covered a lot of years. And so one of the nice things about having this like this is that I can have that view of all, is it 13 years that they're in school? I can have that all in one page and plus it allows me to add in some extra photos. So you can see I've got to go in and add the digital art supplies here change the stains um, and add it in the journaling, but I've certainly made a start with that particular page. Um, so that's the final page. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you too, that I tr include with all of my uh, template albums is that you always get a photo book cover. And this one is uh, unique to this particular album. Um, it doesn't exist in any of the other albums. And because we have a lot of photos in this album, I went with sort of a multi-photo uh, theme. Lily's coming in and she's saying that the streaming is good on the app. So everybody get on the app if you're having a problem with the streaming. Uh, Kathy is using Chrome. She says it's great. Uh, Joan says, thank you for all that great ideas for customizing the templates. Of course, I'm glad that they're helpful. This is the whole point of doing this is so that you guys can see some of the different ways. So you'll notice the different line guides that we have in here. This basically shows you the center of the album. Um, this shows you where the spine is. You've got the area, the bleed area. This is where the cover wraps around the book. And then I've 
created, um, like I said, to fall in line with the multi-photo theme, I thought it would be fitting to have lots of photo possibilities on the album cover too. So all of these photos that I have collected in my sort of little stash here that I've not been able to use, I have the opportunity to use again some more of these um, in, in the template album cover too. So we've got, we've got four here, we've got another two here, so we've got another six on top of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine photos that we have on that back page. Um, and then I purposely left this fun little area here. I don't like to add titles into the mix here, but you could totally add in your own title. So I haven't decided what I'm gonna call this. Um, she's on her way or through the years or something like that. It's gonna be something very small, but, but notice how if I wanted to add in Ella's graduation here, it nestles really nicely in with that area. So that's kind of large. And I'm just playing here. I've not kind of pre-done anything with this. I love this font. This is Euphorogenic. I think it's a really fun font. Um, so I've kind of been using that a lot lately. I just used it to make um, some new previews for the Create Custom Clusters class. Um, so if you guys are on my email list, then you will have received um, an email about the third part that's coming in June when I get back from vacation. I'm not sure why this is not, why is it not changing? <laughs> I'm going to switch to, um, for some reason, it's acting really strange. Okay, so I'm, when things don't work, I just try a different way. I get pretty determined. So I'm just going to use this. So we could have Ella's graduation. I like how the capital letters kind of stand out. So I can have Ella's graduation, which is really not gonna work, or um, we could have through, which just doesn't really work either. So she's, haven't really kind of decided. Uh, she's on her way and you can change the size of the text so I could do it like that um, but anyway you can you kind of get the idea of how you can add this in you can also double uh, double up and have two different types of fonts so best lady is a favorite of mine um, what else have I been using lately that one doesn't really work I don't love that one Australia script is a favorite of mine so if I wanted to combine a script font, but anyway, you can see how you're able to kind of start playing around with the different words of putting that title in there. And you could also keep it super simple and just basically um, put in a date. So it could be 2000 and I don't know, I think it was 2005 to 2021 or it could be class of 2021, that would be a good one to put in there, that would work super well. Um, so I'm kind of just coming up, I, I would kind of wanna just let you know that it doesn't matter what your title is, you can make it fit in that space. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm not doing it very well. So we've got class, and then I quite like that font too, and then we've got of. Bring that down, whoops. See, this is what happens when you're not careful of the auto select. So let's try this again. And for some reason it has selected both of them. Okay, here we go. Third time's a charm. Class of, and then we can add in our 2021. Make this a little larger. You know, maybe change the font of that, maybe something a bit thicker. Bring it down like that. And drag this down like that. So that's that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing for Ella is adding in her class of 21. But you kind of get the idea of roughly how that is going to work. And then of course you're going to um, add in potentially the spine. You can usually do that in, um, in your 
in your whatever printing company you use they usually give you the option to add the spine in that way but if you wanted to uh, I don't know through the years maybe Ella Rose Aspinus and then maybe add in the dates so you could do that and then um, probably change the font I like to have it like 12 or 14, you probably usually 12. Um, and then I try and be consistent with the, with the, with the fonts, but you also want to make sure that it's legible as well. So you can rotate it like this and then kind of add it in the center. And this is our center line here. So you're going to want to make sure that it aligns like that in the center. So if I go ahead and zoom in, you can see we've got through the years and I might pick a different font for that, but you can see how you can add that in. Um, Pat is asking what the font is for class. That one is Folighton number 07 Cult. So oh, no, it, actually it's not even Folighton, it's Foglighton. So I wonder if I can copy, copy and maybe paste it so that you can, there we go. I'll um, put it in a more legible there you go. So that's how it's spelled. Foglighten? Foglighten? I would say it's Folighten, but maybe it's not. Um, it's hard to tell with all the different languages how to pronounce that. But that's that one. Um, so yeah, so that's how I would do the, uh, the cover. Okay, well, no questions. So in that case, we are going to move on to the layouts that my wonderful team have created so far and I'm sure they're going to continue making layouts as we progress through the week. Um, I need to go back to, where was I? Photos, here we go. So we're gonna go back to our template album and then um, we have a couple of layouts here. So the first two actually are mine. These are two layouts that I created for Ella's book. So you can see that they're fairly simple. In this case, I didn't even recolor the stains. I just added a few elements. And if you're interested in learning about elements, then go check out my Create Custom Clusters um, class. And here is one of those layouts in double page format. So I've saved these in individual page format um, really just to show you guys the difference. You can save them as double pages, you can change them as simple as single pages. It really just depends on how you want to print them. So check out the different printing options you have available, decide how you want to print them, see what the specifications are, and then you'll of course save your pages either in single page format or double page format, depending on how you're doing it. Uh, Mikey says she's working on a new page now, so that's awesome. And then Laurie says she thought it was later too, but I got an email no notification that Anna was on, so I jumped on. Yeah, if you are subscribed, if you follow this channel, then they will, uh, Twitch will actually send you an email when I go live. So that's another uh, kind of bonus of following me is that it will let you know when I'm going live. I also sent an email out, I don't know, an hour prior to let them let you know I was going live. Um, I also posted on Facebook. So lots of different information coming at you. So doing my best to try and inform you um, of the right times that you can get here when you need to. Um, so Luli says, where do you get your photo books printed? I have printed many photo books over the years. Um, I used to print with Shutterfly. I then went with uh, Peekaboo. I have done one with Blurb um, and I intend to go back with Blurb, but um, I'm, I'm very careful about how I spend my money and I like to wait for the sales. And Blurb don't have as many sales as some of the others. And I know that Blurb has two big sales each year. So I kind of stash up, I'm kind of, I have a, a book that I made at Christmas and I have this book that I'm making for Ella and she does, now I'm not kind of having to give it to her for a graduation gift, she wants her graduation included, then I probably will wait till the next sale, which I think will probably be coming up at some point this summer and I'll have them both printed at the same time because why save 30% when you can save 50% or why, you know, pay full price? That's kind of just the way I see it. I'm perfectly happy to wait. So I am currently printing with uh, Blurb. 
uh, Persnickety prints, anything about them is excellent. I haven't tried their photo books, but I can certainly vouch for their single prints. They hand trim all of their prints. So um, I highly recommend them. Um, nothing that they do is automated and with shortcuts. So yeah, so I answered the question about the photo books. Let me know if you have any more questions there. Kathy says, of course, that would mean you check the email all the time. I was doing yard work, so not by my computer. One of the things you could do, Kathy, is set a reminder on your phone. So when I send out the email letting you know that I'm doing one of these live sessions, put a reminder in your phone so that when you're out in the garden, then it's going to ping um, and remind you. And then that way you're not relying on me to remind you. Um, so that's an option for you. I always tell my kids that set a reminder on your phone because um, we usually have our phones with us. Um, okay, so lots of information in the chat. Uh, you guys, I love that you guys are chatting with me today. Uh, so the viewers can set a reminder, which is awesome in Twitch. So that's something for you guys to check out. So Keep Scrapping says, I didn't get the email for the cluster class. Is there another newsletter I need to sign up for? So I did have a lot, because I send out frequent emails, I did have uh, a number of people unsubscribe because they said I was spamming them. And so now I have set up different groups and you can go into your preferences. So when you receive an email from me, you can click down at the bottom and it gives you, up, it allows you to update your preferences. And this will allow you to check the different types of emails you receive from me because I have customers over at Design Cuts, I have customers over at, um, Oh, scraps, I have people who are interested in my classes. I have people who are not interested in my classes. And so I've made it now so that there are different groups that you can subscribe to um, that will allow you to be able to personalize what types of emails you receive from me. Um, if you do nothing, then you should get them all. Um, if you're having difficulty with it, then email me and I will go in there and I'll help you with that. Um, but if you want to check out the new cluster class, go and check out the store at Anna Aspinus Designs. So let me go ahead and just show you. Um, you can see if I if you go to my store here now, I've added the new create custom clusters class. So this is now open for registration. And I've also added a group down the bottom here, which basically has all of the custom cluster classes um, together. So the replays of the previous two classes are available if you did, if you miss those. And then of course I offer a 50% discount if you attend the live. And of course you don't have to be there for the live session. There's always going to be a replay, but if you kind of get signed up, um, before we go live, then I always, um, try and offer a really nice discount for you guys. Uh, Ruby Lynn says, I follow the Twitch link and set it in Twitch at that time. Um, so yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for waiting, Luli. She says she would love the replay on the photo inspired. I did actually post um, a replay, a replay. Uh, maybe it was the same one. I don't know. I've done it quite a lot of these sessions now. So if, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, I went, where can I access it from here? So if I go, if you go to resources, then uh, w there's a ton of stuff on the resources page and it actually links to directly to a lot of, let's go ahead and just turn that off a little bit. Um, but if you click on Anna Aspinus Designs and you go to videos, I did, uh, I did post a video um, and I did send out an email that I'd posted it. So you can see there's a start to finish photo inspired project life here. Um, so this could very, very well be the one that you're referring to. Um, I've done a couple since then and I can't remember how many I've done, um, but this was one of them. Like I said, if I'm streaming every week, then it's a lot of content to put up there, but I did put uh, one of them. So there's a bunch of views on it, but I posted that six days ago, so that might be helpful to you. And then Joanne said, when you started showing the layouts just a moment ago, I noticed one of your pages had a frame frames over the large photo mask. Will you remove the mask or just recolor it? I don't understand. If you can give me some more information, then I can answer that question. I'm curious. Uh, I can answer that question for you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about this. I don't know which one I showed. Anyway, get back to me. And in the meantime, uh, we're, st we're kind of getting on to, you know, I don't want to keep you guys here forever. So I just want to show you some of the pages that my team have made. Maybe it was this one. Was this the one you were talking about, Joanne? 
anyway, um, so the next one is from Michelle. So you can see that she has documented uh, Australia Day. So um, I know this is her mom and uh, this is Michelle and her husband and probably various family, friends. Um, but, you know, a great way to just use a single, um, a single template for an event. So you don't have to use the entire collection to create a project album. Joanne says, yes, it was the frame or frames over the large mask. It was just a minute ago when you started showing the pages of the team. So the question was, will you remove the mask or just recolor it? I don't always have a photo to use the large mask on both double page layouts. Yeah, the other thing you can do too is you can just clip a, uh, a, a artsy paper to the mask and or just add a uh, element cluster to it. You can also stamp a, a pictorial style brush on it. Um, and so there's lots of different ways you can do use that mask if you didn't want to um, add a photo to it. So let's bring up the, um, so in this case I added a photo, but say I don't wanna add a photo to that. I'm gonna go to my, um, where was I? New releases, this is where I need to be. So let's go with the Jubilate collection because that's what we've been working with. I'm gonna access my papers. So maybe I'll bring in this paper here, drag it onto my layout design, go to layer, create clipping mask. So I could just add in the paper like this. If I want to, I can resize that paper uh, that kind of gives in the heart sort of um, approach. I could also bring in, if I move my cursor to the top of the layer stack, I can bring in a, um, what, do I, what do I wanna bring in? I wanna bring in some flowers, a multimedia element. So let's bring this in. I have no idea if it's gonna work or not, but we'll see. So I can bring this in, add this in here like that. So that kind of embellishes it. My other option is to um, add a pictorial star brush. So um, I'm gonna have to go and dig for those because I don't have any recent ones. But if I go to my brush sets, I actually have a pictorial and I have them sort of all divided into themes here um, so say if I wanted to add a clock for example I've got these are all my different clock brushes uh, these are sort of more hands of time so this one for example so maybe I want to bring this brush in this would be quite apt so I can add in a brush over the artsy paper and then that's going to add in the visual interest so you can kind of create your own little artsy sort of approach you can also, um, here's the other one that we were working on, and oh, that was the, um, here we go. So the same thing, if I wanted to add in, select the mask, bring in, um, let's bring in a different, let's bring this one in this time. So I can bring this one into the background Maybe uh, make sure that you have your cursor at the top of your layer stack. That would be ideal. So you can even use, uh, you know, some of these frames to um, support your, you know, your, uh, if you don't have, if instead of adding photos to your frames, you can also add elements over your frames. So let's show you this. I've selected the, let's close out some of these files in the background. So we don't have too much going on here. So that's one option. And then if I go back to the Jubilate Art Play palette and bring in the papery, I don't think we've used this one yet. So let's bring this one in. Go to layer, I'm gonna double click that to accept the transformation, create clipping mask. So I can have it like that. I could also rotate this if I wanted to. So that's kind of fun. 
And then if I really wanted to, I could duplicate this layer, drag it up over that um, frame, and you can see it doesn't fully extend. So let's hold that control or command key, move those two, I'm gonna uncheck that auto select box, move it over and then go to lay, um, go back to that layer and go to layer, create clipping mask. So now I've clipped that on there, but it might be a good idea to just um, get that book plate that's down the bottom there and drag it up to the top. There's a lot of layers. So drag it up to the top and then maybe move that so we could move that up here, for example. So this basically now means that you only have to find uh, four photos to fit in your, um, in your layout. Oh, we got some people here want me to be famous. I don't know if I want to be famous. I'm not really that interested. I just want to be able to share, um, <laughs> share how to use this stuff with you. Okay, so good, awesome. So yes, and Mikey shared the title idea too. So if I wanted to add a title into the mix, let's go ahead and show you that. Go back to, this is why I like to work in collections and keep the collections together and why it's so good to buy the collection together is not only do you save money, but you have everything you need um, in order to be able to quickly and easily just drag and drop everything together because it's all coordinated. So I can add this in like that and you can add your title in there as well. So that's kind of fun like that. You could even bring in one of the dimensional um, titles as well if you wanted to. So if I wanted to bring in this, for example, Glad, I could add this up here and maybe add a drop shadow, go to layer, layer style and drop shadow. And that's gonna give it some nice dimension and you can play around with the placement of that. You can even combine a title such as this one with um, one of the word art titles. So these are designed to actually work together. So maybe add this one down here and now bring this down here. I'm gonna just move this, reorder the layers like that. So yeah, so, and I really like the visual triangle that we've got between the dimensional elements here now. So that gives you an idea on, on how you can uh, use that. Uh, <laughs> Ruby Lynn says you're famous to us. Okay, that emoji is weird. I don't know, I think it's kind of fun. It's robotic. Um, okay, so uh, back to the layouts. Eventually we will get back to the layouts. Um, I want to figure out where I'm going. Photoshop, I need to be Ella's graduation. And we are back into our layouts. So we talked about Michelle's layout. Then we've got one from Laura. Laura was funny. She was like, I absolutely love this album. I think she's a bit like me. She takes lots of photos. She also has a lot to say. So she loves the wordy template album too. Um, but she really liked this. She's big on photos and words and keeping things simple. Um, so she does a lot of traveling or at least did uh, prior to COVID. And I love how she's used the, um, the book plate up here to add in um, a fun word. So uh, that was really cool. And I like these, this element here. Uh, she does a great job of adding in those transfers and those artsy transfers behind her photos to add in a little bit of artistry to her designs. And then of course, Diane, who I believe is still here, she is most fabulous because she takes my 12 by 12 templates and she um, creates rectangle format scrapping with the template. So if you are interested, she does have a post on my blog. If I go to blog, and if you search for square uh, or rectangle, rectangle format, if you search for that, it will come up with this post that she wrote, five ways to modify templates for rectangle format scrapping. And I think at some point, I'm not a rectangle format scrapbooker, but at some point it will be really good, I think for me to show you in one of these videos, how you can manipulate uh, my templates for different sizes. So that's coming at some point. 
um, but this gives you a really good ideas on how you can adjust those templates if you prefer to work in 8x10 format or 85 by 11 format, um, kind of very similar. But she does a wonderful job here. You can see how she's used um, the masks to go across two pages and then she's got uh, the frames on one side of the page. So this must be an album that she's working on. And then the wonderful Mikey, she's always uh, scrapbooking her family. Uh, one of my favorite things that um, she does that I also like to do is to take photos with similarity from different time periods and bring them together. Um, and so she's done a lovely uh, kind of a, uh, I, I suppose this was Mother's Day, documenting Mother's Day, but she's gone back and she's dated, like you've got 2009, you've got 1970, 1927. So all of these different moments from across the decades have all kind of collided in this one, one page. And, and I really love that approach. And then this is um, the different version, I guess, of this uh, layout here. She must have done a single and then decided maybe to do a double. So here's the look at using those templates with the, with the two different backgrounds. So I love that you have the, um, the darker and the lighter background. Uh, and you can see how that brings visual interest. Notice too how she's modified those templates. She's removed some of the frames. And in this case, Joanne, she completely removed the, um, completely removed the, uh, the mask. Either that or she added maybe um, a paper to it, but I think you've completely removed the mask. So what that means is, is if we go back to our layout, that would mean we could go and we could just remove all of these layers. So we remove all these stain layers and then you can have a composition that sort of looks like that. And then you've got a lot more room for your journaling. You could add in transfers over here. Um, so that that's another option for you as well. And uh, then we've got Viv, a couple of layouts from Viv. She's an amazing photographer. I love how the paper textures hug the edges. So I'm using the paper textures much like the stains. So what this means is, is that when you clip your photo to the mask, you don't have to be as mindful about colors matching because these intentionally contain your image and create this artsy edge around your blended image. Um, and then she's got another one here. I love the colors in this and she's used his, the use of the pictorial brushes to help support her theme. Michelle says, I didn't use a mask on the right hand page, just use one template over two pages. So um, yeah, so she split the two uh, templates up. So essentially she kept the mask here and she's got the frame and then she moved the rest of the frames over to the other side of the page. So another idea from Michelle, well, that's pretty much what I have for you today. Um, about an hour and a half is usually a good time to end things. I'm happy if you guys have got more questions about using this template album. Um, it's available in the store right now. It's gonna be on sale for a couple of weeks, a 50% discount after which it will go back to full price until we have another sale. And of course, all of my new products are excluded from sales for about three months. Um, just because I don't like people to purchase my products and then to find that they've gone on sale a couple of weeks later. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, you're very welcome, everybody. Uh, Joanne says, enjoy your vacation. I will. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, a couple of conversations. It sounds like people are connecting in Florida, so that's pretty fun. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm just going to hang out for a bit longer because it takes a little while for them to come through. Uh, Joan says, thanks for the chat and tips. Enjoy the vacation. Kay says, thanks for the video. It pays off. I'm going to buy the multi-page. Your videos are going to break the bank. <laughs> Enjoy your vacation. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your support, Kay. Um, yeah. I'm just glad to be able to kind of show you how these products work and this format allows me to do it without having to come up with links and send out tons of emails. Um, it's just really easy for me to kind of just jump and jump on and just share my screen. So 
yeah and Yulia is here yeah and if you're watching and you want to participate then please uh, engage in the chat I'd love to meet you and hear a bit more about you if you have things that you're struggling if you have ideas of what you want to see on this on this format so you know I've already got somebody who would love to see how to manipulate these templates for different size pages. So that's definitely something I'm willing to do. If you have any other ideas of what you'd like to do then, or what you'd like to see, then just, um, you can email me or you can connect in the chat. And um, it's always fun to chat with you guys and connect with you um, in kind of real time.